Testing one, two, three. Alexa, can you hear me? All right, sounds good. Um, we're gonna get started soon. So I'm gonna have Madonna comes up, do the little intro, and then we're gonna pass it on to you, okay? Recording in progress. Welcome to today's webinar with eLotus, your leading provider of acupuncture continuing education. I am Donna Chow, your host and moderator for today's class. Today's class is sponsored by Evergreen Herbs and is titled Intro to Acupuncture Fundamentals in a Community Setting, presented by Alexa Halsey. Class is one hour from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific time and serves as a preview to what you'll be expecting at Alexa's full day classes this weekend. Alexa is a renowned acupuncturist and entrepreneur who founded Encircle Acupuncture in Nashville, Tennessee in 2010. Her mission was to make acupuncture services affordable and accessible to more people, and her clinic has since expanded to two locations and a team of multiple acupuncturists. Encircle has provided over 200,000 affordable treatments to date and is one of the busiest community acupuncture clinics in North America. Alexa's newest project is Community Acupuncture Hub an online resource center for community acupuncturists. We are honored to have her here today to share her expertise and experience in the field of acupuncture. I'll now pass the stage to Alexa to take over and share her presentation. Thank you, Donna. Can everybody hear me okay? Um, yeah, loud and clear. Okay, perfect. I'm so excited to be here um, and I really appreciate everyone joining. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start my uh, slideshow. So let's do that. Okay, and we're going to say, okay. Can everybody see my screen okay? We're good with that. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started then. It looks like everything's playing okay on the screen. So welcome to introduction to acupuncture fundamentals in a community setting. I'm really excited to be here today. Um, some of you have already introduced yourself in the chat, so thank you for doing that. If you haven't, go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat. Tell us where you're joining from. And then I would also love for you to tell us one of your most frequently used acupuncture points and why you love using it. I love getting ideas from other acupuncturists on point selection. We all have so many points to choose from, obviously, and so many applications for each point. So, um, and many ways to combine them too. So I love getting ideas for other acu from other acupuncturists. I love seeing what people do and how they use the points and, um, and that's really why we're here today. We all have something to share, and I, I love learning from my colleagues too. So while you're doing that, I will um, quickly introduce myself and talk a little bit about what to expect from this course. I'm gonna move through this um, kind of quickly because um, today's just one hour. So um, as Donna said, I'm the owner of Encircle Acupuncture in Nashville, Tennessee. I've been practicing acupuncture to, since 2005, and for the first five years of my practice, I practiced in a private room setting, and I loved seeing patients. I loved helping them and helping patients feel better, but um, for me, I found it challenging um, because um, a lot of patients could not pay those prices that I was charging in a private room setting. And um, so there were a whole lot of patients that I just wasn't even seeing, who weren't even able to come in once because it was too expensive for them. And then I had another group of patients who would come in and they'd come in for a few treatments and they would um, start to feel a little bit better. And then they would stop coming in because they were feeling better um, and they didn't want to continue um, having to pay a price for acupuncture that was really beyond their budget. 
Um, so I felt like I was able to make progress with people, but there was more that that I could be doing. And I knew that with more treatment, they would be feeling even better. Um, so there were some frustrations with working in a private room setting. So I decided to look into the community acupuncture model. And by the time I decided to look into community acupuncture, there were a number of clinics in uh, the United States and Canada who were already practicing this way and, uh, and were doing so successfully. So I, I knew that it could be done. And so um, I was trained in the, in the style of community acupuncture that kind of originated with working class acupuncture in Portland, Oregon. And they trained a number of other clinics on the, on the way that they practice community acupuncture. And then it, it just sort of spread from there. So, um, so yes, I started, I opened up my clinic in 2010 and, um, and so we've been going strong for, for 13 years. We have two locations in Nashville. We have multiple practitioners. Um, we, uh, before the pandemic at our busiest, we were providing about 30,000 treatments per year. We're not quite back at that level yet, but we're, we're getting there. Um, and it has shown me that there's a real demand for acupuncture and a need for acupuncture. And if you can make these services affordable and accessible for people, then um, people will be thrilled to be able to, to use this medicine for themselves. Um, I'm also the creator of a, the co-creator of a software system called Open Accu, which is an appointment scheduling and EHR software for acupuncturists. It was developed actually by one of my patients um, because we didn't have online scheduling when I first opened. And he's a uh, he's a programmer and developer, and so he he developed an online scheduling system specifically for my clinic, and uh, then we rolled it out to make it available to other clinics. And so now it is, um, it's, it's a system that really helps you run your practice, schedule appointments, and we have an integrated EHR now. We also have integrated payments. And so it's designed to be just a really streamlined system um, for running your practice and managing health records. And it's designed just for acupuncturists. So here's the website. You can learn more about Open Acu, and I'll, I'll put that again at the end. But that's that's one of the other projects that I'm involved in. And then I'm also a, a writer and a podcaster. I have a Substack called Notes from Your Acupuncturist, and then recently launched a podcast companion to that, also called Notes from Your Acupuncturist. And I started writing and podcasting because I just love sharing with people about our medicine. There's so much that it has to offer. And one thing that happens in a community acupuncture setting is it's a very fast paced, high volume setting. So I don't always have a lot of time to talk to people about all the uh, all the beautiful theory behind what we're doing and about meridians and the five elements and tongues and pulses and all of that. I mean, there's just so, this, this medicine is so rich. And so I wanted a way to share that with people without um, having to take time during a treatment session. So I started writing about it and um, you can subscribe to Notes from Your Acupuncturist on Substack. And I send out a, a note about once a week. And um, usually it has something to do with acupuncture and Chinese medicine, although not always. And then I also uh, release podcast uh, of the same name. And on the podcast, I will talk about what I find interesting about our medicine. And I also interview my colleagues. I interview other acupuncturists and I'm always looking for podcast guests. So if you uh, have anything that you would like to share, sometimes we talk about acupuncture for a specific condition or a specific population, or sometimes we just talk about some like weird theory thing having to do with acupuncture. So if you have something that you want to share and you want to be a podcast guest, uh, let me know. I'll, again, I'll share my, um, my contact information at the end. Um, and then I just want to mention my latest project is Community Acu Hub. And this is 
a new project, definitely a work in progress. This is an online resource center for community acupuncturists. Um, I say that it is a community for people who love community acupuncture. And we have um, free resources that we're adding to the site. I host a monthly meetup for any community acupuncturist or student or somebody who's just interested in community acupuncture. You can come to our free meetup and just hang out and talk about whatever you want to talk about. We're also going to start doing some lunch and learns as well um, so that we can all learn from one another. And we also have a clinic directory on the Community AccuHub site. And if you have a community acupuncture clinic, then you can list it for free in our directory. And all of that information, um, all that information is is on the Community AccuHub website. So those are sort of the, the various projects that I'm involved in. Um, all of them have something to do with acupuncture and Chinese medicine. It is, it's my life, it's what I love, and I like to, um, I like to be involved with it. So why I wanted to teach this course, um, first of all, I wanna see more community acupuncture clinics. Um, community acupuncture fills a need for many patients. It serves mostly patients who otherwise would not be getting acupuncture. And uh, it's, so it's an important way that we can increase acupuncture utilization rates across the population. Um, I also, you know, people are always asking me, patients are always asking me, do you know of any community acupuncture clinics in, you know, XYZ location? And sometimes I do, and I'm so happy to refer them to another community acupuncture clinic, but there's a lot of times when I don't know of any community acupuncturists in their area or a relative's area, and there's not a community acupuncturist. So I'm, I'm always thrilled to see more community acupuncture clinics open and anything that I can do to help just educate people about this model and how to make it work. I'm, I'm excited to do that. Um, and I want to share some fundamental concepts of community acupuncture and keys to success because I've been doing this for 13 years now. I've learned a lot along the way um, and I just want to share that and help other people maybe um, maybe not make some of the mistakes, mistakes that I made or just um, take some take some shortcuts for building a, su a successful clinic. And then I also want to build community and this is a really important one because community acupuncture is not easy. Um, and so it helps to know other acupuncturists who are doing this work so you can learn from each other and exchange ideas and just support when I created Community AccuHub. So what to expect from this course? So today's just a preview of what I'll be teaching in the two-part acupuncture fundamentals in a community setting webinar this weekend. Um, and today I like to give people practical tips that they can start using right away. Like you can use it this afternoon if you want. So today I'm gonna focus just on quick and easy point prescriptions that can be used in any practice setting. These are things that I use every day, points and combinations that I use every day in my clinic um, and you know stuff for you to try out. Um, so this weekend, in part one, um, I'm going to talk about really the what and why of community acupuncture. And in part two, I'm going to talk about the how of community acupuncture. So I hope you'll join this weekend. There's going to be a lot of information. Um, it's going to benefit you as a practitioner and help you make your services more accessible to more patients. Because community acupuncture is really about getting acupuncture to the people who need it. Um, as I've said, it's a very fast paced way of practicing. And one of the keys to making it work is having a set of go-to points and point combinations um, for your most frequent, frequently treated tr conditions. Um, community acupuncture also really emphasizes acupuncture primarily and other modalities like moxa or cupping or herbs are used less frequently. So one of the things that has helped me is just being confident in my needling technique and having a, a set of points that I go back to all the time. So I'm going to start by talking about my philosophy when it comes to point selection, and then I'll dive into some of my frequently used combinations. If you have questions, you can post those in the Q&A at any time. And at the end, um, I will, I'll go through and try to answer as many of those as possible. 
Um, this is only an hour, so I'll be quick. Um, okay, so let's talk about acupuncture now. Um, okay, first I would like to share some lessons in point selection from a three-legged dog. This is my dog, Otis, and he is a tripod. So um, we adopted him a few days after his amputation. And if you look closely, you can even see a little bit of his scar um, on his chest. Um, he had been hit by a car when he was a puppy and the injury didn't heal well. So the veterinarian felt that amputation was really the best option for him. So as soon as we got him, he'd had his amputation, got him a couple of days later, as soon as we got him, of course, I took him to a veterinary acupuncturist um, for some post amputation treatments. So I had, I had a lot that I wanted the acupuncturist to work on. Um, I wanted to help him recover from surgery, uh, help with healing and reducing inflammation at the incision site and reduce the risk of infection. Um, I wanted to help with his balance and adjusting to a new way of moving going from, uh, you know, he was moving on three broken, three regular legs and one broken leg, and then then just going to three legs. So there was a lot of adjustment. Um, I wanted to help reduce inflammation and in the other joints that were now bearing more weight, um, and help with the stress of everything that he'd been through because he had um, he'd had his surgery, and right before his surgery, he'd been on a very long plane ride from Kosovo to the United States. Um, and he and he'd also had giardia, which is a parasitic infection. So his GI system needed a lot of help. So I was one of those patients who come in like with the long list of things that we're going to work on um, for for Otis's acupuncture acupuncturist. So here he is getting acupuncture. And there's not really any sound on this video, so you can just uh, don't worry about sound. We'll just watch this. So here he is getting acupuncture. Good boy. And while you're watching this, um, notice what points the acupuncturist is using. Let's see if you can. Uh huh. <laughs> you can probably identify what points are being used. No, you can't eat the needles. You've had so many delicious treats. You don't need needles. Right. You definitely notice that. Mm -hmm. I know. <gasps> what was that? What was that one that he noticed? Bladder 23. I'll okay. Yeah, we've got to tonify those kidneys. Yeah. Work on that. yeah. Ooh, I noticed. <laughs> I feel it. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, notice what points are being used. We've got Do 20, we've got Yin Tong. We've got bladder 18, bladder 20, bladder 23 on his back. And when he turned his head and looked at her, that's when she needed bladder 23. He really felt that point. Um, she also did large intestine 11. She did stomach 36, gallbladder 21. There might've been a few others in there, but you know, those were the major points. Um, these are all points that acupuncturists use all the time, every day in their clinic, in their basic TCM points. So for that long list, of stuff that I wanted her to work on. He had a traumatic injury, a major surgery, an amputation, a parasitic infection. And she chose a simple combination of points that all have a really broad range of applications. So nothing, nothing fancy. Um, and of course, the acupuncture helped, not surprising. He did three treatments. And here's Otis a few months later. So as you can see, he's clearly moving around just fine. His coat is thick and beautiful and shiny. He's got great muscle tone and he's playing and his tail is wagging and he's not exhibiting any signs of pain at all. And he's a very happy pooch. 
So I, I like this story of Otis because it's a good reminder that it is okay to stick with the basics. I love learning new indications for the points and trying out different point combinations, but it's good to remember that it's perfectly fine to just use tried and true point combinations. And this is one of the things that I love about doing community acupuncture. I give myself the freedom to try out new things because I see my patients really frequently. So I can get quick feedback on how the points work. If I try something new, I might see that patient a few days later. So I can know right away what the effect was. And because we see a high volume of patients in community acupuncture, we can try new things on a larger sample size of patients for even more feedback. Um, I have a, a, a coworker, an acupuncturist who I work with, and um, I, I noticed um, she, started, um, she started doing this, this specific treatment a lot. I would, I would take out the needles from her patients because sometimes we do that at our clinic, like one acupuncturist treats a patient and another acupuncturist removes the needles. So I'd remove the needles from her patients and I would see on her on the lower leg of the patient like six needles in a line starting at liver eight and then going down the liver channel on one side and i was like that's different i've never done that treatment and she learned this technique from a continuing ed course that she had taken and so she just started trying it out on a bunch of patients and she got all kinds of feedback on how it worked and she got quick feedback because she was seeing a lot of patients and seeing them frequently. Um, and and it, was, it was helping a lot of people. And she was essentially using this combination for um, kind of um, uh, moving chi through the liver channel and also nourishing the liver, yin and blood. Uh, so it was a nice balancing treatment that, that a lot of people benefited from. Um, so I like having this freedom to try new things in community acupuncture, but where it comes, where, where that comes from is a foundation of having my tried and true point combinations. And so these tried and true point combinations, that's what I fall back onto. If, um, if I'm having a really busy day and I'm short on time, or if it's a really complicated picture and a patient has a lot going on, or maybe if I'm just kind of stumped, um, or if it's somebody new and they're nervous, um, so my, my overall philosophy is this, rely on a foundation of points and point combinations that have a broad range of applications, points that can be used for lots of different things. Use those points most of the time. And these are my foundational points. When I'm using these, I don't have to think too hard about what I'm doing. I can just focus more on connecting energetically and emotionally with my patient. And then, so I've got that foundation, and then I try out new methods, uh, maybe when I, when I have more time in my schedule, um, or when what I usually do isn't working, um, or sometimes I'll do it like with a patient who, who I know really well and I treat a lot, um, and, are, and I know they're going to be okay with me deviating and, and trying out something different, um, or sometimes if I'm just feeling creative, I'll try something new. Um, and again, I see a lot of patients and I see them frequently, so I get feedback right away, which is great. So now I'm going to talk about some of the points I use every day. Quick and easy point combination. I think of acupuncture as like cooking and the individual points are the ingredients and the point combinations are the recipes and I'm the cook. And I think of myself as um, kind of like a short order cook at a diner. Um, and some, some cooks specialize in a certain type of cuisine, but I do a little bit of everything. Um, and I like to try different methods and different systems and pull from them what, what I find useful to me. Um, and I just sort of make this big, big stew of, of acupuncture techniques. Um, there are some acupuncturists and certainly some community acupuncturists who like to stick with a particular system. Maybe it's the Master Dong system, maybe it's balance method. Um, and I, I highly recommend learning those systems, learning those techniques from the people who specialize them in them. I personally 
don't like to stick with just one method, but that's just me. Um, so I'm not the expert to learn from if you want to do a deep dive on a particular subject, say the master dung system. I use those points. I like those points, but it's not what I use exclusively. So I'm going to present sort of my own pastiche of points and point combinations. And these are all techniques that work well in a fast paced high volume community acupuncture clinic and i'm going to break this up into uh, into two sections non-pain conditions and pain conditions so we'll start with non-pain conditions um my my training is in tcm and tcm theory um, so the tcm theory and mindset is usually my starting point when i treat anything um anything internal medicine um an internal medicine type condition. Um, I tend to use the more meridian based systems or the balance method type systems um, more when I'm doing pain or musculoskeletal, but for non musculoskeletal system, uh, non musculoskeletal conditions, I, I just tend to fall back on TCM. That's how I was trained and it's what I am, what I'm really comfortable with. <clears throat> so we'll start by talking about Miriam Lee. I'm sure many of you know about Miriam Lee. She was born in China. She studied acupuncture in Singapore and um, she immigrated to the United States in 1969 and to California. Acupuncture was illegal at the time, but she treated patients anyway in her home because she knew that she could help a lot of people with acupuncture. Um, in 1974, she was arrested for practicing medicine without a license and she had a trial and at her trial her patients packed the courtroom um, and to claim that they had a right to access this form of medicine that she was practicing um, she was freed and within a few days um, ronald reagan who was the governor at the time um, signed a bill making acupuncture legal as a quote experimental procedure um, and then a couple years later um, Governor Jerry Brown signed a bill to fully legalize acupuncture, and Miriam Lee was one of the first licensed acupuncturists in California. Um, so a detail about the Miriam Lee story that I find interesting is that her patients came to her trial, not just to show their support for her, but also to demand access to a form of health care that they believed was their right to access. Um, so they, they came for her, but they also came to advocate for themselves and for the type of health care that they felt entitled to. Um, uh, and in the modern day practice of acupuncture, community acupuncture, we also very much focus on access and the needs of the patient in this patient centered community based type of model. So, um, so this is the Miriam Lee point combination. It's actually only five points, but I call it Miriam Lee 10, or I abbreviate it as ML10, and a lot of community acupuncturists call it ML10 because it's often done bilaterally, so five points, 10 needles. And this, this combination is a community acupuncturist's best friend. Um, it can treat so many things, it can be applied, applied so broadly. So Miriam Lee developed this combination because she was treating so many patients in her home and she needed something that she could quickly do that would apply to a lot of different conditions. Um, there were times when she was treating close to 20 patients per hour in her home. So she had to work quickly. So her approach was that she used this combination for most patients. And then if she had something more complicated or if somebody wasn't responding well, she'd try something else. Um, <clears throat> Miriam Lee, excuse me. Miriam Lee was a student of the Master Dong system, which is um, a, a lineage based system of acupuncture. And a lot of the Master Dong points are very different from um, Meridian based and TCM points. Um, but these points, these Miriam Lee five points are about as TCM as it gets. So I will 
quickly review her um, reasoning for the points for each of the points in the combination. She she was treating such a large volume of patients. Um, and she said that when she wasn't treating patients, she would just go back to her textbooks, the classic TCM texts for guidance. And one day she found a passage in the Neijing um, that she said was her starting point. And it says when the stomach and the spleen, the central jowl are attacked by emotion, pure chi cannot ascend to the brain and evil chi, the waste cannot descend. It will remain stuck in the stomach. And she correlated pure chi with oxygen and evil chi with carbon dioxide. So her combination of points focuses on the middle jowl as a means for ascending pure chi or oxygen and descending evil chi or carbon dioxide. And here's her basis for each point. She said that stomach 36 is the best point to treat stuck chi in the middle jowl. Um, stomach uh, spleen six helps the liver along with the kidneys and the spleen. Large intestine 11 drains evil chi from the body and helps move the bowel draining waste from the body. Large intestine four also drains evil chi from the body and lung seven clears the kidneys and the kidneys rule the brain. And she, she said, quote, when the brain has enough oxygen, the person thinks and is on the brighter side again, end quote. Um, so that was her uh, reasoning for each of these points. And she said that, she also says um, that because the stomach and the large intestine channels have more chi and blood, you can do no harm by treating them at any time and for any person. That's a direct quote from Miriam Lee. So one of the great things about this combination too is that each of these points treats a lot more than just stuck chi in the middle jowl. So if you're treating a patient with stagnant chi in the middle jowl and respiratory issues, you've got lung seven um, and that's going to support the lungs. Um, so you might not need to add any other points to this combination because you have a point to support the lungs. Um, or if someone has pain, you've got large intestine four, which moves chi and blood and relieves pain. So, so you're already treating multifaceted, multi-layered conditions with just these 10 needles. They, they treat so much more than, you know, just what she, what she used them for. And these were not the only points that she used by any means, but this was the combination that she relied on to help her treat as many patients as possible. And she wrote a book called Insights of a Senior Acupuncturist. And if you haven't read it, you should. And if you haven't read it lately, you should go back and read it again. I highly recommend it. And it's one that I go back to again and again. So there's Miriam Lee's point combination. Now I have what I call a couple of honorary Miriam Lee points um, that don't really, um, treat the middle jowl in the same way as her five point combination. But I often add these two points um, and these two points do 20 and liver three plus Miriam Lee 10 really becomes my foundational point prescription. So do 20, I do this on 99.9% .9 of my patients and it's almost always the, the, first, um, the first needle, the first point that I needle. Um, and to me, the name of this point says it all, Bai Hui, 100 meetings. And in Chinese, the number 100 also stands for many or multitude. So you can think of it as many meetings. And all of the yang channels converge at do 20. So you can treat all of, the, all of the yang channels from this one point. And because all of the yang channels are paired with a yin channel, you can indirectly treat all of the yin channels with this one point. Uh, so this is one point that treats the many. Um, I find that this point will immediately relax a patient, which is why I do it first. Um, and then when a patient's more relaxed, then I find that the rest of the treatment is going to be more effective. So usually unless someone specifically asks me not to needle this point, I will needle it on, on everyone. And then I also um, will very often do liver three um, tai Chong, which means great rushing, 
when you combine liver three with li4 of course you get the four gates and i think of these two points as as opening the gates to release what is stuck and modern life as we know is full of people with a lot of stagnation um, liver chi gets the chi moving um, but it's also an earth point and a yuan source point and a shoe stream point so it doesn't just move chi it also harmonizes and supports so if the liver chi is stagnant liver chi moves it if the liver yin or the liver blood is deficient liver three supports and tonifies um, so really if anything is, is out of whack with the liver liver three can help and again um, we see a lot of patients who who have some liver liver imbalance so that's why i use it so often other frequently used points. Um, these again are all points with a broad range of applications. So I use them because for that reason and also because they just treat the things that I see a lot in my clinic. Um, and I, I definitely have many other points that I use um, besides these and, the, and that I use frequently, but these are just some of the ones with the widest reach. Um, and again, these are non-pain conditions. So Sushin Song, um, I like this combination because I find that it will lift what is sinking and it will sedate what is rising. It helps the body self-regulate. And I use this combination both for anxiety and depression for that reason. Um, I also use this a lot on my pregnant patients for the lifting action. Um, and I have some patients who swear that it is the only thing that helps their insomnia. So I will use this frequently for anything Shen related beyond just basic stress or if you feel like the chi is sinking and needs to be lifted um, for heaviness in the body, I'll use it for that as well. Um, five emotions. So this is a this is a combination that I'll sometimes use as an alternative to Sushin Song. Um, I didn't I didn't learn this combination in school, and I don't even remember where I picked it up. But it's one that I've started using a lot. The way that I locate it is um, is uh, above yin tong just right within the hairline so right here in the center and then uh, on each side right around stomach eight and then i just split the difference between um, the midline and stomach eight and then do two points in between so five points uh, kind of evenly distributed across the anterior hairline not everybody locates it this way one of my coworkers, he he does the five points um, like one sun apart so his needles are more like here, but I do them all the way out. Um, that's another thing I like about acupuncture. You can sort of find what works for you with point combination. Um, so I think of uh, the five emotions, not so much as having the, the lifting and, um, and descending action of Sushin Song, but more of a consolidating effect on the emotions. So I like to use this combination if someone comes in and says that their emotions are all over the place. It helps them to sort of like get centered in their emotions. And we see a lot of that at my clinic. Uh, another one I use frequently is yin tang. This is also very relaxing. It benefits the eyes. It relieves sinus pressure. It's good for mental clarity and insight. And it's good for headaches. Um, so lots, lots of applications there. It has this whole like opening effect on the head and the face. Uh, Sanjiao 5 is another one I use all the time. So Sanjiao 5 is the uh, confluent point of the, um, of the Yang Wei, and it's also a low connecting point. It connects to the pericardium channel. Um, and it's located opposite of pericardium 6. So, you know, pericardium 6, Sanjiao 5, they're, they're opposite each other. So Sanjiao 5 is on the Yang side of the channel that protects the heart and the shen pericardium channel so i think of it i think of it as a protector of the protector um and i like to use this point to protect the shen from anything coming in from the outside and related to that i also like to use it for anything on the exterior of the body so things like allergies and skin conditions um i uh i like to use it um I like to help thing release from the exterior before it penetrates further. Um, also, look where it's positioned. If we use um, 
holographic imaging, which we'll talk about in a second, um, and we image the hand as the head, Sanjiao 5 is located near the base of the neck, and that's where external pathogens enter the body. Um, so because of its location, I like to use it for anything affecting the head to sort of vent things up and out. Um, so like headaches and allergies. Um, another one I use a lot is REN17. It's the front move of the pericardium. So it's good for the Shen. It also releases constraint in the chest, aids breathing. Um, I like to use this when people have so much chi stagnation that they can't even take in a deep breath. Um, also, the lung channel begins in the chest, so it can help with anything affecting the lungs. Spleen 9 I use a lot. It's the Hasea, the um, spleen channel, and the water point. So I use this for anything related to water metabolism, anything with dampness, heaviness, swelling, edema, um, abdominal bloating, PCOS. I also like to use this for um, deficient GI conditions. Um, and also emotional heaviness. I use this point a lot for depression or when people feel like they're just sort of slogging through life. Um, I also use it when the weather is damp or when there's dampness kind of clouding the thoughts. Um, gallbladder 34, meeting point of the tendons and the sinews. So I use this for musculoskeletal stuff. Um, gallbladder 40 is another one I use for pretty much anything related to the gallbladder because it's the Yuan source point of the gallbladder channel. I also like to use it for things affecting the side of the body, um, headaches, stress, indecision. It helps transform phlegm. So I'll use it for phlegm, especially when there's phlegm affecting the heart and the shen, um, as opposed to the spleen and the lungs. I use stomach 40 more for phlegm affecting the spleen and the lungs. Um, I uh, think of it as a good companion for liver three because of the yin yang connection and they're both yuan source points. And um, I also just, I love to massage this point on myself. It's my favorite point to massage. Um, gallbladder 41, confluent point of the daimai and the shoestream of the gallbladder channel. So as the confluent point of the daimai, I use it for anything happening around the waist, low back pain, abdominal bloating, pain in the side rib cage, maybe due to chi stagnation. Um, this one's good for the feet too, because it's the shoe stream point and shoe stream points treat the joints. Um, and then another one I use a lot is kidney three, just to tonify the kidneys. Um, I like to use this when someone tells me they're burnt out or they're exhausted or they're talking about adrenal fatigue. Um, I also like to use this as a preventive if someone um, say is working on a big project or they have a lot of travel coming up um, and of course, I use it for infertility as well, and I like to use it for anxiety when there's a lot of fear because of the um, because of the fear related to the water element. So those are a few of my frequently used points. So these are some frequently used point combinations for some of the conditions that I see a lot. Um, and so I, I use sort of my foundational points of Miriam Lee's ten points plus Dutonian and liver three, and then I'll add other things. And you'll see that a lot of this is TCM based because like I said, that's my default. Um, a lot of other community acupuncturists will use the balance method system, the Richard um, Tan system, and the 12 magical points for internal conditions. They get great results with that. Um, so that's another a good option. Um, I, uh, I've studied balance method a bit, um, but I use it more for pain conditions. Um, some the same goes for the master dung system some community acupuncturists use that exclusively i use some of it but not all the time um and that's one of the things i love about being an acupuncturist there's there's always more to learn um so i will i'll share i'll share some of these combinations if you have questions about other conditions just post that in the q a and i'll i'll try to answer those at the end um i'm going to go through this quickly because i still have so much to talk about sorry um so stress is just my foundational points i love ear shen men also for stress anxiety depression i like to add gallbladder 40 for stress and um, for anxiety i'll often add heart seven and kidney two i like kidney two because of the fire water connection and balances that out um for depression i will often add spleen nine like i said when there's that emotional heaviness um insomnia i'll add uh, often heart seven kidney three um on me in extra point and sometimes shishin, shishin song um 
for headaches, I add Sanjal 5, Gallbladder 40, and then I'll usually do something based on location and I'll do um, a Ying Spring Point on the feet to draw that energy down, depending on the, the location and the meridian affected. So Gallbladder 43, Stomach 44, Liver 2 or Kidney 2. Um, allergies, um, I like to add Sanjal 5, again, because that external connection spleen nine there's usually some dampness involved stomach 44 and then some local points um, for the face um, for menstrual disorders i often add spleen eight and kidney five sometimes spleen nine too i like spleen eight and kidney five sometimes i'll do one or the other sometimes i'll do both because those are both she cleft points and she cleft points on um, on the yin channels regulate blood and they're also good for pain and then just kind of my general point combination for pregnancy is um, do 20, Sushin Song, Yin Tong, Pericardium 6, Stomach 36, and Kidney 3. I don't use uh, LI4 or Spleen 6. All right, so let's talk about quick and easy points for pain conditions. I mentioned earlier Richard Tan and Master Dung. A lot of community acupuncturists use these methods because they're primarily distal, so they're very easy to access in a community setting. And they also don't use a lot of needles, so you can do them fast, and they work very quickly. Um, like a lot of acupuncturists, I was trained to needle pain locally. That's what I learned in school. Um, and, I, and I still do that sometimes. I was... Uh, nervous about using distal points at first because I wasn't sure if it would work, but of course distal points work. Distal treatments are great. Um, so it, it was a little bit of going on faith at first, but they're very effective um, and they're great in a community setting. So I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of the systems that most community acupuncturists use. Um, Richard Tan was uh, originally from Taiwan. He started studying Chinese medicine at a young age. Um, and when he moved to the U.S. and started practicing in San Diego, he would hear his colleagues um, complain about how long it took for their patients to feel better. But in his training, what he learned is that the treatment effects should be immediate. So he started um, teaching other, other acupuncturists how to do his method. He taught for many years. Um, and... Um, I use this light switch analogy that that he that he says when people ask me, patients ask me, well, how do you how do you treat back pain if you don't put needles in the back? And I say it's like a light switch. You can just touch the switch and it works. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with balance method. It's a way of using holographic imaging, um, and it, the holographic image is like the light switch. Um, I like this method because there are very clear guidelines. And if you follow the guidelines, it's going to work. But there's also a lot of freedom in it. Um, so if a patient has um, pain in their, um, in their left knee, you could needle the right elbow, or you could needle the right wrist, or you can needle the right knee as a mirror image. There's, there are a lot of different ways to pair the meridians. Um, so you can find what works for you. Um, another method that community acupuncturists use a lot is the Master Dung system. This is a family lineage based system dating back to the Han Dynasty. Um, Master Dung is originally from uh, Shandong province in China, and he fled to Taiwan in 1949 and began practicing there. He, he broke with family tradition and um, trained non-family members uh, in his system of acupuncture, and that's how his system has proliferated. So this system also uses holographic imaging. It also uses a series of zones on the body um, and many extra points that are located outside of sort of the canon of the 12 primary and eight extra meridians. Like I said, I am far from an expert in either of these traditions. Um, th today, what I'm presenting is just a starting point, just to get you thinking, maybe try something new in your clinic right away. There are great teachers out there for these systems, and I encourage you to study with them. Um, so, um, like I said, I do a little bit of everything, and sometimes I also needle locally. So these are some frequently used points for pain. Um, Lingu and Dabai are both master dung points. 
um, they both move chi and blood. And um, I often use them together. Linggu is located um, near Li4, but just more proximal. And then Da Bai, some people place it at the same place as large intestine three, and some people place it between large intestine three and, um, and Linggu. Uh, you can play around with it and see what works for you. Um, SI3, small intestine three, I use a lot. Um, it's a confluent point of the di meridian, so it's good for back pain and especially spine. Um, I tend to use it more for cervical spine pain because of how I um, use holographic image, imaging. I think of, um, of this, um, this bone here as the head, and then here's, um, here's the neck, and then this meta, um, metacarpal bone as the spine. That's how I image it. And so the small intestine three is at the top of this bone. So the top of the spine is the cervical spine. Um, Small intestine four is a one I use a lot for the lower back and the hip and the small the sacroiliac joint. Um, I use a small intestine channel to treat the large not I use a small intestine channel to treat the urinary bladder channel. Um, so um, point pain along the urinary bladder channel in the back. I use a small intestine channel for that. And small intestine four is one I use a lot. Um, Sanjiao five I use a lot for neck pain because of the connection to the exterior of the body that I mentioned earlier. I also pair it with a gallbladder channel um, to use for pain anywhere on the gallbladder channel. Um, and so when there's pain on the gallbladder channel, um, like in the in the hip or the leg, I often just palpate around Sanjiao 5 for a tender spot. So it's not always exactly Sanjiao 5. Um, gallbladder 34, um, like I said, it's the meeting point of the tendons and sinews. So I use it, I mean, almost all the time for pain. Um, it really helps, um, especially for tendonitis and muscle soreness. Um, gallbladder 41, I use this um, for pain around the midsection. So like I mentioned earlier, I use it for internal stuff around the midsection. I also use it for pain. So low back pain, abdominal pain, hip pain, things like that. I also use it a lot for foot pain. Um, urinary bladder 62. Um, this is the confluent point of the yang chow. So it moves yang energy up and down. And I think of this action as like unblocking stagnation to move yang energy. Um, I use this for pain in the back and the neck. Um, there, there's a lot of points that you can use on the urinary bladder channel um, for back and neck pain. I like UB62 based on where it's positioned on the channel. It's kind of, it's kind of like where at this juncture of your of your leg and your foot and sort of this bend in your anatomy. Um, it's where the channel bends and flows forward, and the back is all all about being able to bend. So I think of this point as aiding in that bending action. Um, Spleen six, of course, we know that it's good for reproductive and um, urogenital disorders. I also like to use it for pain because it's the meeting point of the three leg Ian channel. So liver, kidney, and spleen, it's like treating three channels with one point. So I like to use it for um, leg and foot pain that fall along those channels. Um, and then liver three, I will almost always include this point when treating pain um, just because of its action to move the chi, especially good for the head and the neck and pain along the gallbladder channel. So some of my frequently used point combinations for pain. Again, these are just a few examples and there's a couple of ways that I approach this. Um, so if, if somebody has one sided pain, um, I will usually use channel guiding points on the same side as the pain and then balance those out with corresponding meridian points on the opposite side. And then I'll just fill in the other limbs with whatever else feels appropriate. I mean, if they maybe they have, um, you know, another condition that they're working on besides pain, I'll do other points for that. Um, so also with pain, sometimes I'll use holographic imaging on the opposite side and then again it. Um, balance it out with um, meridian points on the affected side. So um, like say somebody has um, pain in their right thumb, um, then I'll needle points on the left big toe, and then maybe lung and large intestine points higher up on the channel on the right side to move the chi and the blood through that channel. Um, for bilateral pain, I might do all the points bilaterally, um, or I might just sort of mix it up 
And sometimes I will needle the painful area directly in a community setting. Um, so these are just a few combinations. As you can see, I treat a lot of neck, back and shoulder pain and hip pain, lots of us do. That's a lot of um, gallbladder and urinary bladder points. So um, I use Sanjal and small intestine points to balance those out and then guiding points on the gallbladder and urinary bladder points. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these in detail because I want to leave time for questions. Um, up here um, under neck pain, you see Shou Jing Dian. That is a um, that's a master dung point. If you don't know it, it is um, between the um, third and fourth metacarpals. Um, it's on the same level as San Jiao three and Lo Jin. There's all these points right here, and if you look at if you do holographic imaging and you think of these knuckles as the head and the long bones of the metacarpals as the um, spine, then it makes sense that these points are for neck pain. So you can you can try it out and see what works for you. Um, so final thoughts. Just remember that your patient is the one doing the work of healing. You play a part in that, but point selection is only one factor. Um, the treatment environment and your own chi will also influence a patient's response. So be present and treat from your heart. And um, what I mean by that is ultimately healing belongs to the patient. You influence it, you facilitate it, but the patient is the one who changes from within. Um, and point selection does matter, but sometimes it doesn't matter as much as we think it does. Um, I have had some patients who will feel better no matter what I do, and I've had others that I can do what I think is the world's greatest point combination, and it doesn't it doesn't work. Um, so, um, you know, we want to we want to just create space for our patients to heal. We want to have a, a healing intention, but not necessarily force an agenda because ultimately they're healing. Um, in, a, in accordance with what their body needs. And it's good to remember that no matter what, um, no matter what type of setting you're practicing in. Um, if, I, if I approach my patients from a place of love and recognizing the humanity in them, then that's when I feel like I am fulfilling my highest purpose as a practitioner. So I'm going to look through the Q&A now. Um, where's my cursor? Oh, there we go. No. There we go. Okay. Um, am I a nonprofit organization? No. And I'm going to talk more about business structure at the webinar this weekend. Um, uh, did Miriam Lee do the points in specific order? You know, that's a good question. And I'm not sure. It's probably in her book, which is a good reason for me to go back to the book. I generally, my order of operations is to start on the head and move my way down. So when I'm doing Miriam Lee, I'll do do 20, the Miriam Lee points on the arm, then stomach 36, spleen six, and then liver three. Um, do you ever use NADA only or just body points? Um, yeah, I do use NADA. I usually use NADA in conjunction with body points, and I, I will do just a very few body points when I'm doing NADA. Um, uh, and I do have some patients who come in just for NADA, but most of the time I, I will do both. Um, what direction do you needle the five emotions? I needle it back like towards towards do 20, basically. So I needle it this way. Um, let's see. I am having trouble getting my, oh, there we go, never, never mind. What quick points do you have for neurological conditions? Um, the foundation points I use for that, I like the ear shin men, ear sympathetic and ear brain points. Um, I love ear points for neurological conditions. Um, I try to avoid head, uh, head points for headaches, balance method, yes, because they bring chi to the head, yes. Um, do I do uh, tonifying and sedating techniques? That's a great question. And I don't really do specific tonifying and sedating techniques. What I do, um, I usually will needle the head first, almost always. Um, so if I'm doing do 20 on someone who has headaches, I will do that first and then end with points on the feet to draw 
that energy down. And sometimes, sometimes I will skip do 20 if they have a severe active headache right then like if they come in with a horrible migraine i'll probably skip do 20 but if we're you know if they're coming in for like frequent um, tension headaches i'll go ahead and treat it and then end with the points on the feet to really draw that energy down um so yeah the foundation points are the miriam lee 10 points plus do 20 and liver three those are those are my foundation points that's just my thing um Yes, spleen six. Uh, yeah, I definitely use spleen six for um, gynecological issues. Absolutely, all the time, regulating the menses, good for infertility. Um, size and types of needles. I use one sun and half sun needles, and I selected those based on where they're going in the body. Um, and um, I use, I usually use Accuzone needles. Um, Will the course be recorded? Yes, it will. So for anyone who cannot attend this weekend, it will be recorded. Um, okay. Dr. Lee's book is called Insights of a Senior Acupuncturist. Um, business structure is in, um, is in part one of this weekend. And I'm gonna talk about my transition from private to community this weekend too. Um, long list of pain point combinations. Yes, that is true. I don't always use every single point um, on bilaterally. So sometimes I'll just I'll I'll pick a few. I, yeah, that's a good question. I don't use all of these points in the pain combinations every time. Um, the five emotions again, right here, um, in midpoint of right in the hairline, and then either one sun apart or distributed evenly between the midpoint and spleen, uh, stomach eight, and then sort of finding, finding a midpoint. I don't use electroacupuncture. Um, I find it to be a little too time consuming in a community acupuncture setting, so I don't use it. Um, post herpetic neuralgia pain. I love gallbladder and sand jowl points for her post Herpetic neuralgia. I find that it's usually like a um, like a uh, Xiao Yang kind of an issue. Um, so I tend to use those points. How long does it take the treatment um, to insert the needles? It usually just takes me a few minutes, and then I let people rest for an hour with the needles in, up to an hour. Sometimes people don't like to rest as long, and that's fine. But up to an hour. Do I use the four gates bilaterally? Usually I do, yes, unless they have a lot of other stuff going on and I'm using a bunch of other pain points and I don't want to just like throw too many needles in them, then I might um, then I might do liver um, three on one side and LI4 on the other side. Um, okay, I think that that was all of the questions. I went a little bit over time, sorry about that. Um, but I really appreciate everyone's questions and thank you for being here. I'm gonna share my contact info at the end. Where is that? How do I get out of the Q&A? <laughs> and here's my contact information. I love talking to other acupuncturists, so please get in touch with me. Email, call, or text me. Here's my clinic website. This is the website for Open Acu. This is the website for Community Acu Hub. Um, my blog and podcast are on Substack, or you can listen to the podcast anywhere, anywhere you get podcasts. There are my social media handles, and um, I'm going to end with a. Um, I thought I had one more slide, but I guess not. So yeah, here's my contact information. Please get in touch. I love talking to other acupuncturists. And thank you all for being here. Thank you very much, everyone. I would also like to extend a special thank you to Alexa, whose insightful knowledge and generosity made this webinar a valuable learning experience for all of us. If you found this, this preview webinar helpful and wish to deepen your knowledge, I highly recommend signing up for our upcoming weekend class taking place on both Saturday and Sunday from 8 to 5 p.m. Pacific time. Registration is now open. Thank you guys so much for your time, and we look forward to seeing you this weekend. Bye.